All right. We are live. I'm Nora with Travel Leaders, and I'm being joined by Christine Stevens from Herta Gruten. And we are going to be talking all about expedition cruising, what it is, where you can go. And I'm going to turn it over to you, Christine. I'm already loving the images here. It's looking fantastic. And it looks like that in real life, too. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, so Herta Gruten, and I know it's hard to say sometimes, but we are a company that is over 125 years old. So we've been doing this for a very, very long time. We started off as doing cruises, cruises and we still do actually up and down the Norwegian coast. Um, we have some working vessels that go from Bergen up to Kirkenes, Kirkenes down to Bergen. That's how we started. But expeditions is really um, what we want to talk about today and what is really taking off. Um, why expedition cruising? So I think because of the pandemic too, um, we have customers that really want to get away. They want to be on smaller ships. They don't want to be with the masses on these big cruise, cruise ships. So they like the smaller ships. Our biggest ship is 250 cabins. That's our, our largest uh, ship. And we have some ships that only hold 90 people um, in the Galapagos. So smaller ships and really out of the way destinations, Antarctica, Greenland, Iceland, you're not going to see masses of people when you're in um, these destinations. So why Hertegruten? Again, we're over 125 years old. Our expert, expedition team are experts. Um, we're all about science. We're all about exploring um, our destinations. If you look at the, our destinations for 22 and 23 right now, Antarctica, Northwest Passage, Svalbard. A lot of people have never heard of Svalbard. Um, it's where there's more polar bears than people that live there. And of course, Norway, which is our roots. Now, some new destinations for us. Um, Alaska is brand new for this year. Galapagos is brand new for us. So we're, we're exploring into more warm weather, warm water destinations. And West Africa is brand new for us this year. And if you look at the map, we pretty much go everywhere around the world. So part of our our line is all about sustainability. And it's really, really important, especially when you're in these pristine waters and you're in these out of the way destinations, you really have to be aware not to leave anything except for your footprints. Um, we really take sustainability seriously. Two of our ships are hybrid. We were the first hybrid powered ships to come into the marketplace starting um, back in 2018 and 2019. Our other ships are run by biofuel. And if you don't know what biofuel is, it's fuel that's made from like dead fish and waste, but it, you know, they convert it into fuel, but it does not pollute the waters. Um, we're all about giving back to the communities, cleaning up the beaches. You will not find any single use plastic on board the ship anywhere. No straws, no plastic bottles. In fact, you're given a um, metal water bottle in your cabin that you get to keep. And we have water stations throughout the ship. Um, and then, of course, uh, we have the Hertegrinton Foundation. We have something called Green Stay Program, which is if you decide one day you don't need your room cleaned, we donate money back to Hertegrinton Foundation, which we take on different um, projects and we help fund cleanup and different um, sustainable projects. Our fleet, um, this is on the expedition side only, um, but the two ships that are the hybrid ships are the Amundsen and the Nansen. Those are our two newest ships. The Santa Cruz two, we actually, um, is our ship that's in the Galapagos. So that's the ship that only holds 90 people. The Spitsbergen is our ship that does a circle navigation around Spitsbergen, which is also Svalbard. Um, the Sphere Drop, the Auto Sphere Drop and the Mod are both um, doing Expedition Norway. So of course, Norway is our roots. 
but we do something a little bit different, which is expedition Norway, meaning we spend more time in port, a half day or a full day, and we um, do hikes and we take out the, the zodiacs. Um, the mod is actually out of Southampton and the auto sphere drop is out of um, Hamburg, Germany. And then of course the Fram and the Fram is like our flagship. People that have been on the Fram go on the Fram year after year after year. And she was actually just completely redone. So what's different also about on the ships and the way that our ships are designed, we have a lot of um, really comfortable places to just kind of sit back and we have floor to ceiling windows with you know, gorgeous views and looking for wildlife and um, very Scandinavian. You will find fireplaces, not real fireplaces around the ship. And it's really, like I said, casual, like a pair of jeans and a sweater the entire time you're on. Even in our top specialty restaurants, you will never see a pair of heels. You will never see a dress. Very, very casual. And it makes it easier to pack when you're going on an expedition cruise. Included now in the expedition is, um, it's semi-inclusive on board is what I like to call it. It's uh, free internet. It is beer and wine included at meal times, And of course, all your meals are included. Um, we do not put any emphasis on tipping at all because we are a Norwegian company. They don't even like really tip in Norway. So no tipping is expected. Uh, we do include a shore excursion, complimentary shore excursion per day if you're on a um, itinerary that has like a city. So it just depends because when you're in Antarctica and you're in Greenland, you're doing landings and landings are different from like a port of call. Um, and of course, landings are always, always included. And then optional shore excursions. So you could extend pre or post um, in any of our, our uh, destinations. And there are other types of shore excursions available. Safety, right now with COVID, we are still requiring vaccinations for crew and guests. Um, and we still ask for our clients to be uh, tested prior to getting on the ship. And of course we have onboard medical personnel and you know we just continually monitor. Um, things are getting better. Things are going to loosen up, I think, probably in the next couple of months, but right now everything is still in place. Our expedition team is awesome. I would say probably our number one um, reason to do a, a expedition cruise is the expedition team. Um, we have over 350 team members around the world. And of course, on board the ship, they have such a diverse background. So you have people that are photographers or expedition team members that are photographers, scientists, um, experts in bird watching, experts in history, climate control, um, just all kinds of things. And of course, they do different culture or uh, different lectures, and they are from different cultures, but they do different lectures um, all day long. Um, some other things that are included that you don't have to pack. So we do include the jacket. It's a Heli Hansen jacket and it is windproof and waterproof. So when you're on the Zodiacs, it will keep you dry and warm. I always tell people like if you're in Antarctica to layer up, you're, you're going to want to have a, like a puffy jacket underneath um, your expedition jacket and you get to, to keep the jacket and take the jacket home. Now the muck boots um, are used mainly in Antarctica and the national parks of Greenland. They are required for getting on and off the ship because we, we have to make sure that we are bringing nothing on land and nothing back to the ship. And these boots go through a whole cleaning process when you're getting on and off the ship. So they're, they're easy, um, they're heavy actually, so you wouldn't want to take them home, but they're easy to clean when you're in these destinations. And then of course your walking sticks. The expedition launch, um, I always put this picture in here because a lot of times people think, you know, if it's 
too high adventure that you wouldn't be able to do it. But we have all different levels. And I say it's more soft adventure than really hardcore adventure. But getting on and off of the Zodiacs or the rib boats is really easy. The guys are there to help you getting on and off and you're just like stepping into a bathtub. So it's very easy getting on and off. Um, our excursions, again, there's different levels. So if you wanted, say in Antarctica, you just wanted to get off of the Zodiac and do a little walk and see the penguins and the seals, you know, the expedition team will map that out for you. But if you're a little bit more adventuresome, there are some hikes that they'll map out. So, and they tell you, you know, this is for more adventuresome. This is for a higher level. Um, and this is just to see the wildlife. So there's different types of um, excursions for every physical level. And some of the landings, when you're on land, you may have to do a wet landing. So the boots also come in handy because they're waterproof. Um, again, though, they're there to help you. They have uh, the stairs. Um, sometimes in Antarctica, they're going to have to shovel out a staircase made out of snow, but they make it easy for you to get on and off um, land and on and off the ship. Every ship has a science center. So in the science center, there is a scientist that is in there to talk to you to answer questions. There is uh, microscopes. We have something called the Citizen Science Project. We bring in scientists from different um, schools, some different um, colleges or different organizations, and they'll be on for the sailing and they're doing some sort of research. So it may be something about climate control or something about taking water samples. So you would actually work hand in hand with them. If there's a movie called, Where Did You Go Bernadette? I don't know if any of you have ever seen that movie, but um, she goes to Antarctica and she really works with the science scientists on board collecting water samples and really helping with that. And then the engagement on board. So we don't have Broadway shows. We don't have casinos. It's all about learning. It's all about in-depth lectures. There's different uh, subjects all day long. And usually when you're in Antarctica or when you're in e even Greenland, when you're doing an expedition, you have to make sure that you're flexible. Like in the brochure, there may not even be an itinerary. So it's always plan A, B, C, D, E, because it all depends on the weather conditions. It all depends on the ice conditions. So ice could move in pretty quickly. So they have to make sure that the zodiacs could get in and out and the ship could get in and out of certain areas. So we usually decide the day before where we're going the next day. And the expedition team usually will then have um, a lecture after dinner and tell you, okay, here's the plan for tomorrow. So you have to be adventuresome that way and, um, and flexible. Of course, on board, we have a wellness center with the saunas, we have hot tubs, we have an infinity pool, and we have gyms, uh, a gym and a fitness center. Our culinary experience is awesome. You would um, be very surprised at how great the, the culinary is on board the ship. We do have three different restaurants. So Lindstrom, which is our specialty dining uh, restaurant. If you are in a suite, it's complimentary. Um, if not, then it is 35 euro to have dinner up in Lindstrom. And again, you do not have to get dressed up. Your jeans and your sweaters are fine up there. Um, the main dining room serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Sometimes it's buffet, sometimes it's table service. It kind of varies. And then of course we have a, a casual restaurant where we serve burgers and tacos. And every once in a while on a cruise, you just want some of that junk food. So just to go through briefly um, our destinations a little bit more in depth, we do have Antarctica. This is probably our entry into the product. We do, we do have three ships in Antarctica every season and season is usually November through the very beginning of March. 
And two of the ships do a shorter cruise and then the Fram does our longer cruise to the Falklands. And um, it's usually like maybe an 18 day, 21 day cruise. So it's our longer Antarctica itineraries. Northwest Passage. Northwest Passage is actually going from Nome all the way to Greenland and you're, you're going through the passage. And um, I think I was saying before that we don't have actual ice breakers. Our ships are thick hulled and they move the, the ice. So um, we sometimes will hire an ice breaker to go in front of us to make sure that the passage is clear and then we move the ice as we go through the passage. Svalbard, which I've talked about with the polar bears, and we do a circle navigation of Svalbard. And if you're doing that, definitely spend a couple of days pre or post in Long Year Bin. And then of course, Norway. Norway for us, we do Norway three different ways, right? We do Expedition Norway, which is what this is. We do the Coastal Norway, and we have a brand new product that we just announced last week called Iconic which it's going to be a ship that's going to be doing itineraries from um, Bergen up to Svalbard or from Oslo in the winter up to the North Cape. So if you want to see the Northern Lights, you can see them on either of these three different itineraries. And uh, we do have a Northern Lights guarantee. So if you don't see the Northern Lights, we put you on another cruise to make sure you see the Northern Lights. So we do all of these Norway cruises year round. So wintertime and summertime. Iceland, Greenland, our ship right now, um, the Nansen is in Greenland right now. So I keep getting reports about the weather and the ports that they're in right now. Um, we do some North America. Most of these are when we are moving the ships from um, Antarctica up to Alaska or from Antarctica, Antarctica up to Iceland. So we do some Canada, New England, we do Alaska, we do um, some coastal cruises along the way. Of, co of course, the warmer weather, Central America, Caribbean, and brand new for us this year, Galapagos. South America, British Isles, Europe, Transoceanic, um, transatlantic. And then of course, West Africa, brand new for us this year, also Cape Verde and the Visagos Islands. And that is us in a nutshell. Um, I wanted to like give you guys a little bit of time to ask questions as you look at your penguin. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, sounded absolutely fantastic. I am going to um, open up the Q&A or the chat to anybody that has any questions and I will monitor those for you. Um, but what is the season for Antarctica and the Arctic? Are they a little bit different? They are different because they're opposite actually of each other. So we do Antarctica, like I was saying, usually mid-November through the very beginning of March. And the ships are in the Arctic right now. So it's the sum, our summer when we do the Arctic, when we do uh, Iceland, Greenland, Svalbard. Um, even, like I said, Norway though is year round, but Norway is on the way to the Arctic. Sounds good. And for the Galapagos, are you there year round or um, is that seasonal as well? No, nope, we are there year round year round. There's different things to see. Um, the weather's pretty easy, right? Year round. It's pretty kind of warm, not totally warm, not as warm as I think people think it, it, it's going to be. Um, we do provide, you know, the wet suits. Sometimes if you wanted to snorkel or um, get into the water. Um, but yeah, it's a year round, year round uh, itinerary for us. Fantastic. I don't see any other questions coming in, but um, if anyone has any questions, they'll be able to respond to the email um, that sent you this registration link and, and I'll get it to one of our advisors to help you. But Christine, it's nice meeting you. You did a you great too. job on this presentation. I'm excited about it. 
And uh, if anybody has any questions, they know they can reach out to us at Travel Leaders. All of your travel advisors are looking forward to talking to you about these amazing current group and itineraries for expedition cruising. Thanks, everybody. Have Thanks. a great afternoon. Thank you. Bye-bye.